great start to the season. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing you're obviously very happy to have the wins, but you're also pretty happy with the way the team's playing. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think, uh, you know, even going back to pre-season, each week we're trying to give ourselves little goals of getting a little bit better each week. And um, I thought that from week one to week two, we were a better team, and uh, hopefully we're going to be a better team against Saturday night. Um, there's still a lot of things. I think we're masking our deficiencies fairly well at the moment, um, but we're working hard to try and overcome those, and uh, yeah, hopefully they don't show their head on Saturday. Did you uh, approach the season with sort of a block games in mind and sort of a pass mark for that in terms of results, or is it just sort of... Nah, not at all. I hate to sound boring, but it's the same answer. It's like the, the whole time was like, let's just get better. Um, the, the, the main priority we felt from our perspective was to build the culture and build that correctly um, and make sure that uh, the people we have here are the people that we want to keep, the people who are here are behaving in the manner that we want them to behave and that it's natural and, and good for them. And we felt that the basketball side of things would just take care of itself and um, so far it has. Um, and I think our culture is pretty good in the locker room at the moment too. Speaking of um, new faces, you've got um, Jay Crockett who's joined the um, top side of the um, injury replacement for Ty. Can you sort of tell us sort of how that came about and what you see in him? Yeah, so um, Jay, Jay's agent also is John, John Robertson's agent and um, you know, we, we've built up a pretty good relationship with him. Um, when Ty went down, he's watching our games because he's watching, keep an eye on John and uh, when Ty went down he kind of reached out to us as did some other agents and just said, hey, look, if you need a plan B, here's so-and-so. And, -so. and um, out of the guys that were available, Jay, we felt, um, represented what we were looking for the most. I mean, he's a really high-level energy player. Um, you know, you don't need to really run a play for him. He can go out and get his 15 and 8 just by sheer work. And um, we will run a few things for him because he's a pretty gifted guy. But, uh, you know, he works the defensive end of the floor, he works the boards, and a little, he's got all the little one percenters that you need for, you know, to free up our, our blue chip guys. It must be nice having someone like John be able to vouch for him, because I imagine that you can watch all the video you like, but you might not be quite sure of the character of the person that you're getting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, firstly, we watched him on the court. Um, as I said, we built up a pretty good relationship with the agent, and, um, and you know, he says that he's a legit guy. We take him at his word, and we kind of got to that point, and then just maybe checked with John, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I think we're in a good place, and he's certainly. You know, the moment he came through the door, we realised what he, he is. What was uh, sold to us. How's the crash course going? You only had him for three sessions. Has he slotted in okay? Yeah, he has. As I said, like he defends and he rebounds and he and, and he and he works hard. So that from that perspective, there's no sort of education for him. It's really about just getting him down with our patterns, and uh, he needs to sort of work off the other guys and realise what their strengths are. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's hard when you bring a guy in. You know, you know, some people have said, oh, you know, it was a great job winning without Ty. Well, we didn't have anyone to bring in. It's still the same guys that we've been working with all the time, and so there was a natural for us to keep pushing forward. Now we've had to take a, a step back this week and reintroduce some stuff, and there's a little element of frustration that that, that uh, goes around doing that. Um, but I think the guys have really sort of presented themselves this week and, and not showing any frustration having to go backwards to go forward so that's been a real positive for us. Can the fans get a bit excited as well? Like he looks like Yeah, no, he got, he got a little bit of flavour to his game so that's good. Yeah, no, it's, um, the fans are going to see, look, he's not Ty Wesley, he's a completely different beast, you know. Ty, you throw a roll the ball into him in the post and you know good things are going to happen. Uh, out in the break when Jay's got the ball, you know good things are going to happen. So it's different strengths and weaknesses but, um, but yeah, he's certainly going to excite a few. What sort of game time are you thinking for him on Saturday? Uh, well, I guess if we talk game time, we know what the referees are going to call and know who's in foul trouble. <laughs> we don't really have it mapped yeah. out just at this point. Um, you know, we, we're going to go into the game and just, you know, work around what presents us during the course of the game. But uh, if we can get him half a game, I'd be pretty happy with that. Can you give us an update on Terry Armstrong? I mean, I guess the fans are quite... Yeah, I know. It's a frustrating one. And I, I don't have my head across where he's at right today because um, his, the expectation was that he would actually join us on the floor. Um, he got through a few minutes into the session and it looks like um, it's taken a little step backwards. But I haven't sat down with the doctors and the physios yet to find out exactly what took place today and have them run me through. So, unfortunately, don't have an update just at the moment. But uh, from what I can gather, it's a little step backwards. It's... A, it's still his foot or is it more to it? Uh, it was a foot and then there was a calf that came because of the foot and now I believe there might be a little bit of a quad issue. So yeah, it's just, um, we'll see. 
Yeah, I'm not across it. <laughs> I actually just heard something as I was waltzing in here to come yeah. talk to you. So I don't know exactly what the what what's happened now. It must be a tough time for a young kid to be out here. It's awful. Be, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, he's happy to stick it out and. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's awful, and, and of course you know the BS rumours will start as like, oh, what's going on there? It's like the kids just had some tough breaks. Um, when we've had him in here, he's been you know. Like any other young kid, he, he's, there's some issues with regards to he's dealing with adults. So you know that's that's going to be uh, a huge step for him. Um, but he's he's making those inroads um, as far as you know acclimatising himself to his teammates. It's really right now it's about getting him on the floor and uh, unleashing him on the league. But uh, yeah, we we'll just keep getting uh, hitting some hurdles. Illawarra had a good win on the weekend. What do you sort of make it make it them? Um, yeah, look. There's a lot of talent on that team, and uh, they're doing a wonderful job getting on the offensive boards. They can find themselves the free throw line a lot, um, and then probably don't haven't played with the pace I was expecting, um, especially what we saw up in Albury. Um, but I, I think it's sort of, you know, you come into a season. I know I felt it. You're a new coach in the league, and you once you get that win, you feel a little more relaxed. And I'm sure the players were playing with a little anxiety, the new system and all that. But um, yeah, they're, they're, there's a lot of talent there. Um, you know, Josh Boone took that hit in the face, so that might be one soldier down, but uh, I'm not 100% across that either. But uh, they're, they're a very, very deep team, and uh, we're expecting to see the best of them um, on Saturday night, and uh, that'll be a real, really good challenge. Gibbo last week played 13 minutes, roughly. Um, what's the plan with him? Are you, are you going to increase that? Uh, at the moment, is he building yeah, up? Yeah, the more plan than that, wasn't or? to play him 13 minutes last week. Yeah. I think I had about eight in, the, in, the, in my mind, but um, yeah. you know, we, we kind of hit a bit of foul trouble, and uh, you know he had to sort of play a few extra minutes for us, which I've probably got a little frown in the frowns from the doctors and the physios. But um, yeah, look, he's had an, a really good week on the track this week, and. Um, you know, last week leading into the game, it was right up to game time we weren't sure. Like he really hadn't put the work in and it's been like seven or eight weeks. Um, so we're, he's a ways behind, but he's just he's just so damn smart. You know, he, he get him on the court today, his team won all the games and he was running with the second group. So he's just, he looked like he's just about ready. So yeah, we'll get him in there and don't have a plan for minutes in mind. I still haven't spoken to medical staff about you know what's best for him just yet, but uh, if there's any indication of what today, he's certainly going to make a push for, for a larger role. Longer term, he's got a much bigger role to play than that. Absolutely, yeah, and we're going to be patient with him. We feel like we've got a little bit of depth in the backcourt that we can cover for him. And that's you know one of the great things of having guys like, you know even a Mitch Creek, is that you can play the four man or you can play him at the two. Mm-hmm. So it's, we've got a little bit of coverage there and we can rotate some guys through when he's not there, but I'd much rather have him there if it's OK. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs>